joining us to investigate this particular issue, which has been ignored mostly by the media. Peter Schweitzer is the president of the Government Accountability Institute, host of the Drill Down podcast, and uh, Seamus Bruner, also with the Government Accountability Institute. And they have a new story out on walls and his connection to China. uh, And it's called What is Behind the Great Walls of China? Anyway, uh, welcome both of you. What is the Great Walls of China? Uh, Peter Schweitzer. Well, I think it's it's a long history that he has with China, Sean, and I think it's a, a history um, of him really uh, running interference uh, for the Chinese regime. Um, just look at as he's been governor. I mean, we can talk about the exchange program. Seamus has done a lot of great research on that. Uh, but just look at his tenure as governor. Uh, Minnesota, like so many other states, is plagued uh, by fentanyl overdoses. Uh, and yet he has never called out China for their central role in the fentanyl crisis. And let's remember the bipartisan uh, Select Committee on China in Congress has gone on record and said China is behind all of this, uh, but Walls will not criticize them. We also know that, you know, you've reported on this, Sean, about these secret police stations that are around the country uh, that China set up. They're designed to, to harass Chinese nationals living in the United States, and there have actually been some abductions where they abduct people and return them to China. One of the seven of those is in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis. And in fact, the organization behind it uh, works jointly with something called Minnesota Global, which is a Walls um, uh, organization. Um, Now, Governor Walls has certainly criticized the police conduct of the Minneapolis Police Department and St. Paul, Minnesota Police Department. What he's never done is denounce or done anything about uh, eliminating this unofficial secret police department that the Chinese are actually running in his state. Um, And that just fits this longer pattern, Sean, of... Uh, a running interference and offering what the Chinese ask for with people in the West, which is big help with a little bad mouth. He might criticize the Chinese here or there, but he is doing their bidding in the things that really matter to them. Well, let's get your take. And what else are we learning? Did the communist Chinese pay him in any way? Seamus Bruner. Yeah, Sean, it's great to be with you. I mean, the stolen valor, as you mentioned, is a total disgrace. But it's all the more egregious given the fact he's been cozying up with China. And so going back to the beginning uh, with these trips, the Chinese Communist Party subsidized these trips to China. Now, Walls and his wife set up a company, Educational Travel Adventures. Uh, uh, This is in the 90s. We don't have records going back that far, but we need to know how much money did uh, that Walls company make for these trips. And the fact that the Chinese Communist Party subsidized the trips, gave scholarships to these, these students who uh, teacher walls said to downplay your Americanness when you're over in China. Uh, I mean, we talked to multiple U.S. intelligence experts. They say they're... Yeah, he, actually, he actually said that? He said you need to downplay your Americanness. He told his students when we visit China, downplay your Americanness. This was reported back in the day in the local press. Um, and so uh, U.S. intelligence experts agree there is a 0% chance that the Chinese Communist Party's Ministry of State Security, basically their CIA, wasn't aware of and even supporting these trips. I mean, it's, it's no chance that China's intelligence apparatus wasn't aware of and helping facilitate these trips. Um, and then, you know, there's so many connections. If you fast forward to when he became governor, Peter talked about a couple of them. And we've got more. Peter, I mean, why do I think if I after all I've said about President Xi and all we've exposed on this program and you've exposed and putting you on the program, if if either you or myself or Seamus ever went to China, we'd probably be arrested, never to be seen or heard from again. Oh, no question about it. Um, And look, Walls always uh, tries to explain away uh, Chinese uh, misconduct. So, you know, he went on the when he was in Congress, he went on the floor of, of, of the House on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. And let's remember uh, the most authoritative accounts in the accounts in the West say that the Chinese uh, military and police killed about 10,000 Chinese nationals at Tiananmen Square. Um, on the anniversary, Wall said, yes, you know, Tiananmen Square is terrible, but we have those situations in the United States, too, and then compared it to uh, the killing at Wounded Knee, uh, you know, in the 19th century. Um, and again, that was tragic. 38 uh, Native Americans were killed. 
But there's no comparison between the two in terms of scale. And also, you know, Wounded Knee was immediately a scandal in the United States. President Xi of China, his wife, who's a famous singer in China, after the Tiananmen Square massacre, actually sang and serenaded the troops who had participated in that brutal killing. Um, and for Walls to sort of try to muddy the waters by comparing the two uh, is just absurd. He knows better. He knows they're not similar. But it's this role that he plays in sort of always, um, you know, giving China the benefit of the doubt, not challenging them, not calling them out. He's been much tougher verbally on the Trump administration than he's ever been on the Xi administration. Uh, and that's what I think is so worrying, because, of course, were he to become vice president, an important part of his bill, it would actually be international affairs. And this is about the only thing we can see uh, that he's had to do on the international stage. And it's extremely troubling. It's very troubling. When you look at all of these issues, uh, I, I think, unfortunately, we saw this a little bit with the with the Bidens and their work with the CEFC, the Chinese oil conglomerate, and the uh, sheer amount of money that the family enterprise was making in doing business with China. I mean, Hunter admits he has no experience in energy, oil, gas, coal, or China, but yet he's getting, you know, a fortune. Uh, there was that infamous phone call, Seamus, where I'm sitting next to my father, uh, the WhatsApp message, actually not a phone call, and uh, between, you know, why didn't you keep your commitment, and between everybody that this man next to me knows and my ability to hold the grudge, you're going to regret not fulfilling your responsibility. Did they or did they not get around $5 million in one of their bank accounts or as James Comer calls them, shell corporations, uh, in the days that followed. Oh, they they absolutely did. The Bidens cashed in big time. But remember, Joe Biden would always say he never met with his son's big, uh, business partners, Chinese business partners. Now, we know that that was a lie, but there was a point. He was saying that he, uh, the public official, never met with the Chinese. That's not true for Walls. At his inauguration, he invited uh, diplomats, CCP diplomats and officials to his inauguration. They congratulated him on his election, and they said that they wanted to jointly promote quote, the friendly cooperative relations between Minnesota and China. That's just weird. I mean, maybe in California, which is much closer to China, uh, you'd have CCP diplomats attending your inauguration. But why in Minnesota? Now, that diplomat left the Walls inauguration to go meet with uh, various Walls cronies at this NGO that uh, Peter mentioned, Minnesota Global. And they were going to promote their friendly cooperation with this. It's a Walls uh, organization that hires him for multiple speaking engagements, this Minnesota Global. And then that organization is partnered with the Chinese American Association of Minnesota, another CCP cutout. And this is the uh, secret police station that Schweitzer mentions. And so the connections are so close. And then they all have Walls come speak at their events, these Chinese Communist Party backed events. And he's done this multiple times. Uh, I've not seen a governor. We've looked at a lot of governors. We've not seen governors who are meeting and cozying up with Chinese spy organizations. I mean, I just never saw anything like it in my life. All right, we continue from the Government Accountability Institute. We have Seamus Bruner and we have Peter Schweitzer. In case you haven't gotten Peter's new book, you want to know about China. He knows everything. Red-handed, how American elites get rich helping China, blood money, why the powerful turn a blind eye while China is killing Americans. Uh, when you look at everything in, in combination, there's never been a more radical ticket to ever run for high office this way. But if you've been paying attention this weekend, I mean, Kamala Harris is now trying to back away from every position that she's ever had. Uh, you know, what a joke her saying that, oh, yeah, we're going to we're going to stop taxing uh, uh, tips on service employees when she signed the the Inflation Reduction Act that did just that and literally helped hire what would be the equivalent eventually of 87,000 IRS agents to go after people's tips. I mean, the exact opposite. And she would have you believe she's the toughest person on the border that ever existed. Is this strategy going to work? Because the media is pretty complicit and compliant. They're just an extension of a press office. They're not vetting her. We're vetting her, but not many other people are. No, I mean, that's that you, you nailed it, Sean. I mean, the, the, the absence of the media, which sadly we've gotten used to, uh, here is very, very chilling. And, and look, uh, Harrison Walls recognizes Joe Biden did in 2020. 
uh, that the country is still a center, center right country. So what did Joe Biden do in 2020? All the you know, stuff with COVID and all the craziness going on. He said, no, 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 I'm a centrist. And he ran as a centrist, and the media never called him out on it. We're seeing a replay of that strategy now. I'm not sure it's going to work this time, Sean, because, you know, Biden had been there for, for 40 years. Um, he had taken, you know, left positions on some things, other positions he was more uh, in the middle. Um, you certainly cannot say that about Kamala Harris um, or Walls. Both of them come out of liberal hothouses, San Francisco and Minneapolis, and they've been able to function in essentially political uh, uh, oh. areas where they're one-party states. Uh, so it's going to be very different oh. than the back-of-back that they're going to try. Uh, we're going to put a link to you, too, but you've written great books about this and and your more recent Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich Helping China, Blood Money, Why the Powerful Turn a Blind Eye While China Kills Americans, uh, Hannity.com, Amazon.com, and bookstores around the country. Peter Schweitzer and Seamus Bruner, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sean.